What's going on, gang? Welcome, welcome. Welcome to, uh, actually here, welcome to February in uh, Southern California. It's currently 72 degrees on the way up to 81. It's supposed to be 86 tomorrow, 88 on Saturday. Yeah, welcome to uh, sunny Southern California. So we've got a lot of questions that came in. And thank you to every single one of you who submitted a question. I'm going to do my best to get to a bunch of them. Normally when I do these Q&As, I tend to kind of spend too much time on each question. So I'm going to try to get through a bunch of them. And listen, if you sent in a question, thank you very much. There was really a lot. I was surprised how many questions um, actually came through. So thank you very much. I probably won't be able to get to every single one. Uh, there were some sort of off-color ones, which I appreciate, but I'm probably not going to answer them on camera. Um, hope you can understand. But anyway, I'm going to do my best to get to a bunch of these. So let's get started. Uh, you into crypto. Thoughts? Uh, not really. I jumped on the bandwagon. What was it? 2020 into 21. I jumped on the bandwagon and had uh, held some Bitcoin and also some Ethereum. Uh, I just I got out of it, sold everything. It was just really too unstable for me. So I'm not into that space. I get it, I understand it, I appreciate it, but it's just not something not something I'm willing to partake in at the moment. I'd rather allocate my finances to other more important things for me, at least in this point in my life. All right, next question is from my buddy, Sean. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, dude. Uh, Sean's a guy that lives here in town. I met Sean recently. Sean is asking, do you like gladiator movies and have you ever seen a grown man naked? Uh, dude, what? Uh, all right. Gladiator movies, yeah, I think my favorite was 300. Uh, so yeah, gladiator movies are kind of cool. And have I ever seen a grown man naked? Why are you asking? Uh, but yeah, I've been to the gym. And isn't that what you see when you have group sex? I'm kidding, or am I? All right, and moving on from Sean, uh, we have uh, David is asking for tips on what to do after a long time relationship breakup. I'm trying to figure that out right now. <laughs> there's there's a lot to unpack there and that might be like a whole video right I think that it depends on each individual so I think for me and I would say for most people like chill out take some time for yourself uh, get to know yourself do things by yourself just do what you can to occupy your time to better yourself and I guess, distance yourself from the other person. It depends on the breakup. Like, was it one person that wanted the breakup, the other one didn't? Was it mutual? That all, I think, I think I'm not a therapist, but I think that all sort of plays a role in how to get over that kind of a thing. <clears throat> what I would avoid is, at least for me, jumping back into dating or trying to find another relationship to fill the void of your last one. It's just a recipe for disaster, especially if you're not over the last relationship, the new relationship just won't work because you're not over the last one. So there's, there's a lot to unpack with this question. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I would say just to chill out, relax, do the best you can to keep yourself busy and occupied and go do things on your own. And I've said this in some videos recently where you don't need a permission slip from anyone to go do stuff by yourself. If you want to go see a movie, go. If you want to go out to Italian food, go by yourself and sit at the bar. It's totally, totally fine. So yeah, if you're thinking that you'll be embarrassed to go to a restaurant by yourself or to go do stuff by yourself, don't. I promise you, there's, there's a lot of fun to be had hanging out by yourself with yourself. Justin is asking, what's the best car you have ever owned? I know you're a petrol head. Uh, yeah, so, okay, so there's a few cars that I've owned that, you know, have been sort of highlights for me. There's one car that got away, and I'll get to that. So, okay, first things first, the, the black Audi SQ5 that I had before, this orange one I have, you guys have seen that in some videos. Uh, I had that car for, what, two and a half, three years, something like that. Super great car, super fast, very nice super luxurious, kind of too expensive for me at, at that point. Really, really nice car. 
Um, I've had some BMWs that were really cool. My race car, I built that thing from a street car into a championship winning race car. Uh, and I won that championship back in 2006. I know I talk about that from time to time, but uh, it was super cool. And it's something that I'm very proud of. That was a cool car. The car that got away though, I had a, I had a 2005 S2000. Love that car. I wish I still had that car. Sometimes I think about, you know, maybe getting like a weekend convertible or like an old Miata or something like that, just to tool around, you know, and take the top down and stuff. But it's like, I'm not going to do that anytime soon, but I still think about it. And then I think about having that, that Roadster, that S2000, freaking love that car. Anyway, those are some of the ones that, uh, that, that were my favorites and the one that got away. A minor detail is asking, I see you visit a lot of wineries. What kinds of wine do you enjoy most? Any recommendations? Um, wines I enjoy most. I really don't discriminate. I like a lot of wine. <laughs> um, it, it depends, right? It depends on the, the time of day. It depends what I'm doing. It depends what I'm eating, how I feel, where I'm at, the party atmosphere. Is it chill? That all sort of depends, at least for me, on what I would like to sip on. If it's daytime, at least here in Southern California, like today, like I said, it's going to be warm today and then the next few days. If I go out for lunch somewhere, I want a nice chilled Pinot Grigio Sauvignon Blanc with a chicken Caesar salad or something along those lines. Or if I'm just going to go have a glass of wine somewhere and not eat anything, I still want a chilled white. That thick, chewy red, that really heavy tobacco, earthy red doesn't really work for me when it's super hot outside because it's super hot outside. And that's kind of, for me, it's kind of hard to choke down. So a nice chilled white. Evenings, I mean, I like, I like single varietal um, Cabernets. I like Bordeaux blends. I like uh, Malbec. I, I, I like a lot of it. Chianti is super, super nice. Let, let me just say this. If you go to an Italian restaurant, a decent Italian restaurant, and if you don't know what wine to order, order the, the, the Chianti that's on the menu. Everyone's gonna have a Chianti, just order it, and it'll be great. Uh, anyway, so that's my recommendations on, I don't know, that's, that's what I like. I think a lot of people, everyone likes different stuff. Like some people really enjoy Chardonnay. And I don't like Chardonnay, but I know a lot of people really enjoy Chardonnay. I do know that there's like a California movement that's trying to bring some of that butter oakiness out of the Chardonnay because that's the one thing that people don't like about Chardonnay. It's too buttery, it's too vanilla, and it's a little too thick for a white wine. And I agree with that. I'm not a Chardonnay guy, but I do know that there are some wineries in California, here in Temecula included, that are developing some Chardonnays that are um, barreled in stainless steel with some oak chips. I think that's how they're doing it to bring back some of that sort of oaky flavor without it being this sort of butter bomb of, of this sort of super buttery, oaky, vanilla sort of flavor. Anyway, uh, I hope that helps. <laughs> okay, then this one is bringing back the heavy a little bit. <laughs> How are you adjusting to single life? I'm recently single after an eight year long relationship. That's harsh. Uh, how am I adjusting? I'm in therapy, how about that? But I'm good, like it's not that there's like anything wrong or anything, I'm just, I want to be the best version of myself that I can be. And I know that that sounds super cliche and people seem to use that as a punchline a lot of the times, right? Be the best version of you. I get that. I get that. I, I understand how that sounds. I talk about like being the best version and like working on yourself and all of that stuff. And I'm doing all of that, right? So I think there's, you know, I get, I get some comments and I get some feedback and some negativity where or when I make those types of videos, I'm just over here trying to do my thing. And I do understand the responsibility that I have, not only to myself, right, to be a well-adjusted individual, but also to you guys, because there's a lot of you guys that, you know, listen to stuff that I say, and I value that. I understand that responsibility. So, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> I don't only talk the talk, I'm walking the walk. How am I adjusting? I'm doing great. I'm adjusting very well. Not only for myself, but for whoever I end up hanging out with, you know, in the future. 
So isn't that the way it should be? I feel like, and, and I say this a lot in, in videos and stuff, that you need to be cool with who you are first before anybody else comes in, before you allow anyone else to come in. And that's kind of where I'm at. I'm, I'm working on, on all of that stuff. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm doing well. I'm not sad. I'm not regretful. I'm doing well. And I'm taking it, you know, step by step. So I feel like I'm doing the healthy thing. I think I'm doing the healthy thing. I'm doing the healthy thing for me. Anyway, yeah, how am I adjusting? I'm doing great. I'm doing, I'm doing good. I hope there's something there that you can sort of latch on to, but an eight year relationship is a super long time. That's a lot of investment in a relationship and a person. Oh, and if you wanna know what's on the TV, it's a, uh, here, it's, it's a YouTube channel and it plays music and it does this cool scenery. Anyway, I just kind of have that playing pretty much all day in the house. Uh, it's just kind of cool, kind of chill out, electronic sort of vibey music. I kind of like that stuff. All right, next question. Uh, if you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? Basically, if I wasn't, if I wasn't doing YouTube channel full time, what would I be doing? Uh, I would either be back in photography doing commercial stuff, or I would be some type of a coach or a therapist, I think. I don't know, I don't know. But if, if YouTube was not an option, I mean, maybe I'd be a blogger. I mean, I enjoy writing, I enjoy developing content. Yeah, dude, I think it would, I would either be a photographer or some type of a coach or a therapist or something like that. I've said before also that I'm sort of the hype man. I like to hype other people up. I enjoy the satisfaction of what I get back when other people feel really cool or that I've helped somebody through something or that I've helped somebody feel better or feel good about themselves. Super, super like that, but... I don't know if that's really a profession, but that's something that I would try to go after. All right, I think Daniel is bringing the heat here with this question. Daniel is asking, have you ever given tips, advice, or recommendations that you yourself have trouble following? I really try not to. And like I just mentioned, I, I try to walk the walk because it wouldn't make any sense for me to talk about a product that I don't like or give advice that I don't personally follow because now I'm dishonest and that's not what I'm about. I will say, I will say, there's two areas of my life that could use some improvement that I do talk about. And I feel like when I do talk about this stuff that I'm pretty honest with, with you guys, one is a healthy diet and one is exercise. I go through spurts where I'm super on track and I'm eating well, I'm exercising, cutting out alcohol, and then I revert back Something happens and I don't, you know, work out for a couple days. And then when I don't, I end up not eating as healthy. If maybe I drank too much the Friday night, Saturday is kind of a wasted day and I end up eating a bunch of crap. So I do the best I can. I'm human, but I feel like I do a pretty good job of walking the walk. Next question. How hard has it been to adapt to living on your own and have you enjoyed your freedom? Adapting, adapting. Uh, let me break that up into two parts. Um, yeah, adapting has been interesting, a little weird. I haven't lived by myself since I was a kid, right? Um, it's always been either roommates or girlfriends or my ex-wife and then my, my previous girlfriend lived with her. So I really haven't lived like on my own in a really long time. And that's kind of weird. Um, so the adapting... It's, it's fine. It's just been a little bit of a process. It does get a little quiet and kind of lonely sometimes, but I'm, I'm adapting pretty well. Do I enjoy my freedom? Hell yeah. I really, really do. Um, I mean, with, with what I do, I, I, I make my own schedule. That's all I really have to worry about at this point is, is just work and coming up with content, writing, filming, editing, um, trying to grow another brand. Uh, I'll talk about that at some other future date. But yeah, enjoying the freedom. Yes, absolutely. What's the largest age gap you've had between you and a significant other? My previous girlfriend that uh, I've been with for the last couple of years, we were 11 years apart. And it wasn't really that big of a deal. 
it'd be funny sometimes where I would quote like an old Seinfeld episode and she would have no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> so there was sort of intricacies that way, but otherwise it was not that big of a deal. Uh, next question. Oh, Phil, again, worst dating story. Phil, I don't have, I don't have bad dating stories, Phil. I've got great dating stories. Um, to actually, to be honest with you, I really haven't dated that much. I've been, you know, relationship to relationship. So I really haven't, haven't dated that much, but when I have, they've been fantastic. Interesting question coming up here. Uh, what do you wear to a funeral? I'm overthinking this, trying not to overdress or underdress. It's a funeral. Um, you have to be respectful of why you're there. No bold patterns, nothing. Wear very simple black and white. Unless you're going to like a life celebration. If you're going to like a backyard party celebration, a house party, we're celebrating life, that's different. If you're going to a funeral to mourn in the traditional sense, Everything needs to be very toned down and dark. I noticed a tabletop books on your shelf. Uh, any on cars and not fashion. Yeah, actually, hang on, let me go get, there's one. I want another one, let me go get one. All right, I've got this one that I got on Amazon. Uh, you can see that one, luxury and speed. I thought it was gonna be a little bit better. Whoops, I thought it was gonna be my microphone. I thought it was gonna be a little different than it actually is. I mean, it's got a Porsche on the cover. So I thought that it would be like, you know, current modern hypercars. But a lot of it is sort of old, sort of, you know, icons of speed, that kind of a thing. You know, older cars like this. And then the further back you get, basically they start to get newer and newer until you eventually, oh, there's a Lexus. Okay, so yeah, anyway, I thought it was gonna be a little bit different than it turned out to be. But I think I have like one or two in my Amazon shopping cart that I should just go ahead and check out and get some of those. But I need a coffee table book for right over there. So I might get another car one for over there. All right, two questions here that are kind of the same and I'm gonna answer both of them. David's asking, what was your initial motivation to start a YouTube channel? And then somebody else had asked, what inspired you to do what you do today? A couple, couple things here, first of all, I like helping people. I just really, I, deep down, I like helping people. Um, I don't know why. I just, I think it's really cool to take somebody from A and get them to B. I don't know. But really the, the reason was I had lost like, and I've talked about this before, I lost 35 pounds, almost 40 pounds back in like 2013, 14. And I started writing a blog. I just started writing about like, how to buy new clothes, right? Because you, if you lose 40 pounds, you can't, nothing in your closet works. You have to buy everything, you know, all over again. So when I was figuring out what to buy at, you know, my early forties at that time, what do I buy? Like, what, how do I do a new closet? I built a blog and then I started making YouTube videos to drive traffic back to my website. The problem, not even, not a problem, but what happened was YouTube took off. YouTube exploded pretty quickly. And so now everything I'm doing, I don't think I've updated my blog, my actual website in like four months. I need to you know, get on that. But everything has been focused now on the YouTube channel. That's where advertising comes from. That's where I'm, you know, brand deals pay more to be over on YouTube. So that has been the focus. But what started was basically me talking to myself like nobody read my blog back then, but it was a genuine desire to help or to teach other guys what I had just learned. That's kind of it. All right, Dave asked two more questions. What's your favorite pair of white leather sneakers right now? I think probably Thursday, uh, Thursday sneakers and also um, Ace Marks. They're both doing great jobs. He also asked, how often should you purge your closet? Every season. Every season, take a look at it. Uh, right now it's winter. I mean, we probably should have done a winter purge, you know, in like November. And then we'll do another one probably around March, maybe, as we're getting into spring. That's my idea anyway. Watches to consider under $5,000. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have $5,000 to spend on a watch. So I'm not... 
to keep it very real, I, I'm just not in that, I'm not in that market. I'm, I'm, that's not my arena. I'm not a cheap ass, but I also don't spend money that I don't want to spend on a flashy little thing that would impress somebody else. It's not, it's not where I live. It's, it's just not something that I'm interested in. Would I like a nice watch? Yes. Uh, if I was going to get a nice watch, it would probably be, what is it, the uh, Omega? Is it the Seamaster? The, the white face one? I really like that one. I think that one's about five or $6,000, maybe more now. But uh, yeah, dude, I just, I'm not a watch. I just, I don't live in that space. So I know there's lots of other watch channels that could better answer that question. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Are you happy at the moment? Am I happy? I think so. I think that I'm, I think that I'm joyful. And maybe there's a difference there. I'm not exactly sure. Am I happy? Yeah, yeah. I'm not happy all the time. I don't think any of us are happy all the time. I do things that bring me joy and fulfillment. At least I try. Like I said, man, I try to walk that walk that I always talk about. And I think that's what makes me relatable to a lot of you guys. That I'm not trying to blow smoke. I'm not trying to bullshit anyone. But am I happy? I, yeah, I think so. Could I be happier? Yes. I'm, I'm in this sort of... I feel like I'm in this sort of transition. I didn't think we we're going to get this deep, but anyway, I'm trying to do my best to answer your questions. Sorry if I'm taking too long on the questions, but I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a weird period in my life of transition. That's new for me, and I'm trying to navigate that the best that I can and also remain positive at the same time. Am I happy? Yeah, I think so. And so, see, it doesn't, it's not a good answer if I say, yeah, I think so. Yes, I'm, I'm working on it. How about that? I think that's a better answer. I'm working on it. And I do a lot of things that bring me joy. So I'm joyful for the most part. Am I completely happy? Dude, I don't know, man. I don't know that, where's the gauge of happiness? Is the gauge of happiness how I feel right now? Right now, at this very moment, I'm very happy. Doing this makes me very happy. Tomorrow, something might happen that could make me really happy, or I discover something, or, or, or something lands in my email that makes me happy or brings me joy. Now I'm happier than, than this gauge. So there's, there's, there's a difference in what part of happiness touches you where, right? And I know that sounds really weird, but... Uh, yes, I'm happy. There's different levels of happiness and happiness affects you spiritually, mentally, physically, I think differently. Anyway, not to get all deep and stuff, but Dave, thank you. Yes, I'm happy. Will you marry your girlfriend? When? Uh, I don't have a girlfriend. I'm single. So that would be, that would be, <laughs> that would be a bit of a challenge. Uh, next question. Dave, bringing it strong. 80s music, guilty pleasure. Dude, come on. Let's go. Anything hair metal, anything hair metal. Grew up in Seattle, so all of the 90s, I guess, grunge, um, you know, 80s and 90s. 80s and 90s hair bands kind of is my thing. Do you guys know I used to be in a band? When I was a teenager, late teens, I was in a band. I played bass guitar. I had super long hair. I'll try to find, I'll try to find some pictures of myself and put them on screen. I'd have to look. Anyway, uh, super long hair. Super into rock and roll. Uh, yeah, all that stuff. But all of the things. The movie, though, if you want to see a really good movie, it's, um, shit, Rockstar. The movie Rockstar. If you have not seen that movie, I think I've probably seen that thing like 10 times. Jennifer Aniston, Mark Wahlberg, fantastic movie uh, about that sort of arena rock sort of era. Anyway, super, super good movie. But yeah, I'm into anything rock and roll, anything hair metal. Okay, I'm going to try to scoot through these last remaining questions because I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. I do apologize. I hope you're still with me. Uh, have you ever thought about leaving California and moving somewhere else? Yeah, when I was looking for this house, uh, when I was looking for a place to live, I was, going, I was going to Vegas. I was looking in Henderson, 
Summerlin, is it Greenville Ranch? I don't know. I was looking to get out of California. I was going to Vegas. This house came up and seriously, I'm five minutes down the road from where I used to live. So I'm very much in the same area. This house came up um, and I was the first one to look at it. I was the first one to apply for it and I got it. And now this is in a time where finding rental houses is very, very hard. So I'm trying to like line up all these places to go see in Vegas. And I was going to like go to Vegas and spend like three or four days, you know, drive around and tour these houses, but they were not available anymore. They'd be available. And then two days they'd be gone. So way too hard to do remotely. So this one came up, I jumped on it and here I am. Okay. Rapid fire, a couple questions. And every time I put my glasses on, you guys have to take a drink. <laughs> That's the game. Uh, what size shoe do you wear? I mean, I'm like a nine and a half, 10, depending on the, the shoe manufacturer. Uh, and I'm standard width. Uh, what do you use to, what do you use to silver your grays? Right here, right here. If you can see this Barcelona pulp riot, purple toning shampoo, gentlemen, if you have gray hair and it's getting that sort of yellow brassy tint to it, purple shampoo, purple shampoo, purple shampoo all day long. Uh, if you want this, this is the stuff that I use. I'll put, I'll try to put a link to it down in the description. Where do you shop for home decor? Uh, home goods, Target, Amazon. And there's a new store here in town that just, that just took over the old Kmart and it's called at home. Pretty cool stuff. What's your favorite red wine? I don't have a favorite red wine. I like all, I like a lot of red wine. I've got, I think right now I've got nine bottles over there. Um, but let's see. Yeah, I don't have a favorite. I, I like, I just, I like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of wine. I'm a fan of drinking wine. <laughs> I'm teaching the eighth grade boys in my homeroom how to tie a tie. Easiest knot. The four in hand. Uh, I've got a video on how to tie a tie and how to tie a bow tie. A couple different tie knots uh, are involved there. So if you go to my, go to my channel, my main channel uh, under videos and search for how to tie, you'll see it. What are your top Californian wine selections? <laughs> Lots of wine uh, questions. Uh, what are your top California wine selections you have sampled since the new year? Um, I would, they're all blends. Uh, actually, I've got a Cab Franc over there that uh, is from Ponte that's, that's really good. There is a Cartuccia Red from Botaya that's really good. It's a blend. I forget actually what it's a blend of. I think I have one over there. Um, yeah, lots of blends. I do like, sometimes single varietals can be very good. Sometimes they can be a little bit off. Temecula Valley gets very, very hot. It's a very interesting climate here. Cool um, evenings, really hot days during the growing season. So. That makes wine a little different than say like Washington State, Eastern Oregon, or you know Napa, Sonoma, the, the coast of Northern California, those types of places. But yeah, I don't, like I've said you know, before, I don't really discriminate. I can't really pick anything out other than some of the new red blends that I've had. Very interesting question here. What to wear to a friend's women's fashion brand brick and mortar store opening? Wear something fashionable. Wear something a little bit more bold than you might otherwise wear. Um, it's a party. It's an event. It's a, it's a fashion store. So the whole idea, the whole party is, is sort of centered around this person's clothing and fashion and style that gives you that permission to be able to do something maybe a little bit different than you otherwise maybe wouldn't do if you're just going to go out to dinner with your spouse or friends or something, right? So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't peacock heavily, but you do have that permission. It's like going to a fashion show, right? I've gone to a bunch of fashion shows. Everyone there is peacocking, right? So the whole idea is to look stylish and look fashionable. So yeah, feel free to experiment and tell me how it goes. Did you grow up fashionable? No, no, no. Not at all. Uh, blue collar. Dude, I, I, 
yeah, I worked in manufacturing. I worked in a factory. I dug ditches. I, I built a race car. I no, I was a professional dirty clothing guy. Like, no, I, it wasn't until later in life that I sort of discovered that I can do things a little bit better. I want to be a better person for my spouse. I want, I think I got to the point where, and I'm still just going back to when I was still married, that like the women, even, even today, if you go out to dinner or to a bar somewhere and you see a couple together, a, a woman and a man, the woman always looks amazing and she always looks 10 times better than the dude. He's wearing flip-flops and cargo shorts and a t-shirt with a backwards baseball hat and she's wearing like a spring dress or something. It's so crazy. So for me, it was, it was a matter of respect. And I think I had gone through, you know, some changes in my life at that point and, you know, got in shape got out of racing, my dad had died, and kind of wasn't happy with who I was and where I was in my life. Hated my job, wanted to do, wanted to do something else. So this is back, I don't know, this is back, this is back a, while, a, a while. But yeah, and it was just out of respect. I wanted to look better for my person, for my partner. And I think that's kind of where it started, but no, did I always, did I grow up fashionable, stylish? No. Holy moly, I think this was a pretty good one. I think you guys took me to therapy today. That was, that was pretty interesting. Lots of really good questions. If you submitted a question and I didn't get to it, I do apologize. But listen, thank you all so, so very much. You're all amazing. I appreciate you more than you probably even know. Thank you again for watching. Live well, and I'll see you in the next one.